Hey guys, I keep getting requests to do a lost resin casting guide, also known as investment casting, covering all the steps and equipment needed to turn a 3D print into solid metal, such as bronze, silver, gold, or whatever. So that's my aim today. I'll also be looking for ways of saving money, as this can be a very expensive technique. But fortunately, I've developed a few low-cost budget solutions that may help. As you'd expect, this process begins with a 3D resin printer, but the model and brand really doesn't matter. Honestly, any resin printer will do, so choose according to your budget and needs. Though, of course, the better the print quality you can achieve, the better the metal castings should be. The magic ingredient for lost resin casting is the resin itself. Ordinary resins just won't work properly, so a specialised castable resin is needed. I've tested a number of castable resins, and so far at least, my personal favourite, based on affordability, printability and casting results, is Soraya Tech Cast. It does a great job and doesn't break the bank, but like all things, it's a personal preference. The printed pattern needs to be encased in a specialised plaster, and to hold this, we need a metal flask. There's two main sorts of flask, perforated and solid. Perforated are much more expensive and require a costly vacuum system, which I'll cover more in a moment. But for those on a budget or with smaller needs, these solid flasks are nice and cheap and can be used with my homemade vacuum system, which again I'll cover in a moment. Specialised casting investment plaster is needed, and this you really shouldn't skimp on. This is not plaster of Paris. It's a special blend of plaster, and it is actually porous, allowing a vacuum to pass through it. This plaster needs to be carefully weighed and mixed, according to the manufacturer's instructions so an accurate set of weighing scales is also a must. The 3D print gets attached to wax sprues. I use a wax pen for this, as it precisely melts the wax, giving the user control. There's a thick central trunk, and often smaller branches, which gives us what is commonly called a casting tree. The wax trunk sits in a rubber or silicon base, though I've had great success in printing PLA bases. The weighed investment powder is then mixed with distilled water, working within specific temperatures and time frames stipulated by the plaster manufacturer. It then needs to be vacuumed before being allowed to rest, usually for not less than 90 minutes, before going on to an oven. Vacuuming the mixed plaster is critical as it ensures proper consistency and removes unwanted trapped air. And ideally, you'll need a vacuum chamber and vacuum pump. These are expensive, but I did create my own very simple and very cheap vacuum chamber and manual PVC pump, which I successfully used on dozens of occasions. Later, I upgraded to the Arby casting system, which does it all working with both solid and perforated flasks for improved results. Once the plaster has set and rested, it needs to be cooked in what's commonly called a burnout oven. This uses a carefully controlled heating sequence, taking several hours. The wax and resin burn away cleanly, and the plaster is baked to prepare it for casting at very high temperatures so your kitchen oven just won't do it. This means you will need a burnout oven. Now again, these can be very expensive, though I am talking to various manufacturers to try and get cheaper options. In the meantime, I built my own electric furnace for just a few hundred pounds, and it's much easier than you'd think. Yes, I employed a fancy hoist mechanism to raise and lower it, but that drives up the cost and you might not need something that complex. You could keep things much simpler and therefore much cheaper. Once the burnout cycle is complete, it's time to melt some metal. 
you can't use the burnout oven as that's already busy. Plus a higher temperature is likely needed. So a second furnace is required. Gas is very quick and I've already reviewed the Devil Forge furnace, which does a fair job. But you can't accurately control the end temperature. For that reason, I personally prefer electric furnaces, which work indoors, are very quiet, reasonably quick and are very capable at controlling the temperature. This budget furnace I reviewed recently is still doing well, so it's worthwhile considering. When it comes to the pour, once again you'll want to vacuum your flask. Now trust me, I've tried lots of ways not to use vacuum, and none of them achieved suitable results. But when I finally came up with my homemade vacuum chamber and pump, my results changed dramatically for the better. The purpose of the vacuum is simple. The resin print has burnt away, leaving a print-shaped hole inside the plaster. Molten metal is poured in, but this has trouble filling all the nooks and crannies. A vacuum system pulls on the metal through the plaster, removing trapped air pockets and pulling the metal into every crevice. When starting out, my homemade system will serve you well. Though, if possible, replace the plastic pump with a proper vacuum pump, as manual pumping is a bit of a pain. Now, my pump states that it should not be used on anything hot, but I've used it dozens of occasions with a long hose, or without incident. But do this at your own risk, as these are expensive things to break. However, of course, something like the Arby system is a much better choice and does the job faultlessly though it will cost you that bit more. Plunge the flask into a bucket of water a few seconds after the red glow has gone from the visible metal. Finally, it's time to clean up your casting, cutting away the sprues and filing things smooth. For this, a simple jeweler's saw works great and metal files help clean things up. However, a multi-tool like a Dremel gives you cutting, sanding and polishing options. A better choice would be a Fordham, which has a strong, long-lasting motor to do the job better, though these are expensive. Thankfully, I recently reviewed the Arby Pro Flex system, which does exactly the same job for less than half the price. I enjoy polishing this way as it gives me a feeling of control, though I have made a vibration on tumbler which, though noisy, works fairly well. There's also the option of a barrel tumbler, which uses water and metal shot to planish the castings. Before I move on, a lot of the aforementioned is covered separately and in more detail in other videos. So I've put together a video list, as well as a list of these videos, in the description to make life easier. I've also placed links to products for you guys, but feel free to shop around, especially if you're in a different part of the world to me. Lastly, don't forget the safety equipment. I've never really covered this in any detail, as it's largely a personal choice and common sense. But here's my minimum recommendations. A full face cover, not just goggles, as molten metal can splash. A thick leather apron and sturdy boots, for the same reason. Quality gloves to stop you burning yourself. And finally, a mask, especially if you don't work in a well-ventilated area, which you really should. So, in a nutshell, that's investment casting. This technique can be applied to resin, wax or PLA, but I personally love the ease and convenience of resin printing. It's not the cheapest pastime, but it does allow you to make some fantastic things. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to drop me a line. So that's it for now guys, take care and thanks for watching.